Danielle, I'm a third year geography student and I'm from Maryland. I'm Trinity, I'm a sophomore and I'm studying biobehavioral health and I'm from Philadelphia. By the way, that's not Trinity's real hair. Did you know that? So how do you, how do you straighten it? What do you do? But if you look at say 4C, any of the four, and you imagine that you, you gotta straighten that. They imagine what it takes to actually get that straight and to hold it straight. People don't have baseball caps. You know, you don't, no one's wearing a Yankees cap there, my friend. And so you're in the sun and the sun's intense. And it's not to protect, it's to, it's to protect your brain. Half of all US states now are, have either passed or are passing laws saying that you cannot discriminate in the workplace, you cannot discriminate against women on the basis of wearing their hair natural. That's, that, that's pretty, that to me, it seems pretty racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be like saying, you have to wear a skin whitener. I don't know what the difference is, but this feels to me like it would be an example of white privilege. What type of hair do you have? Your natural hair? That's a really hard question. I think maybe close to about like 3B, maybe 3C. 3B, maybe 3C? Yeah. Trinity, what is your... No, mine's is 4A naturally. 4A naturally? By the way, bro, that's, that's not Trinity's real hair. Did you know that? It's a wig. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, a wig and a so dude. a wig is like one big piece of hair. Like if I put this, pull this hat back, it's it's one big chunk of hair all sewn together on like a cap. A weave is like you braid your hair and then you sew tracks onto your own braided hair. But your your natural hair. How long is your hair? My natural hair is probably like shoulder length curly. Right, right now it is. Yeah. So do you and you and how do you have it up under your wig? So underneath this, it's just like I have two big braids, like just braided back my natural hair. Uh huh, uh huh. So, but Danielle, so your natural hair is is three A or three three B maybe three C. So how do you how do you straighten it? What do you do? So. Usually my hair is actually like I either get a relaxer or a perm, which really for which for black people that tends to at least for me it makes my hair much straighter. So mm -hmm. I don't actually have to like use a flat iron or a curling iron to straighten my hair all the time. But for about like eight weeks, when I wash it and dry it, it'll go back to being pretty straight naturally. Mm -hmm. Or at least with like a bit of blow drying and uh -huh. some like flat ironing. How long does what take? Yeah, it's just straightening, it? like kind of keeping it straight. Okay. Like how do, your treatment that you do? Well, I guess uh, so. I actually have extensions in right now, uh -huh. and the difference between extensions and a weave is that like a weave is pretty much everything, but extensions means that you have like some of your real hair out. And for when I get my extensions like redone every eight weeks, that can be about like four to five hours. Uh -huh. But when washing my hair, um, the time it takes to like wash and then let it dry and then like strain it out, that will take about like three to four hours. But if you look at say 4C, any of the four, and you imagine that you, you gotta straighten that. They imagine what it takes to actually get that straight and to hold it straight. This, this is, that's not easy to do. Like, yeah, it's really intense. It's really hard. A lot of chemicals, lots of things. So in the black community, there are a lot, a lot of women who are like, it's, it's go, go natural, man. Like, what's the natural? Just go natural. I mean, it's, this is not like wearing straight hair. So can you say something about that? Why not do why not go natural? I don't know. I feel like for in the black community, it's a lot about like, we kind of switch up our looks a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's many different ways you can do your hair. And I feel like with straightening, a lot of black women now use it as like a way to trim their hair, keep their hair maintained. Um, and sometimes it's just for a different look, but now it's become like a thing where like, it's not, I, wouldn't say, I would say we don't really straighten our hair as often anymore. I think it's become like more of a 
thing to go natural, which I guess it's like just because it better protects our hair. I feel like straightening straightening is damaging to our hair. So yeah, so it's easier to just put a wig on. Yeah. And and for you, you know, I mean, it's kind of like we were talking about plastic surgery on Tuesday, but in a, in a way that's really a permanent thing, or or like getting a tattoo, getting a temporary tattoo is one thing, but you know you. It's a way to kind of switch things up. Yeah, so for me, um, personally, my hair is extremely thin. In the past, it was always thin and short. And after wearing extensions for a couple of years, it's now been like it's, it was able to grow a lot longer, which is good. But because I have that thinness, going natural doesn't make that much sense for me because mm. I don't have a lot of like hair to work with. Uh -huh. Like you see all these um, styles online and you hear people talking about like, you should go natural, you should go natural. And I think it should be everybody's choice, but regarding my hair and just its thinness, it's really hard for me to go natural because there's just not a lot to work with. Do you either of you know the, the purpose of, you know, curled, coiled, we see, it's like kinked. There's, you know, like 4B is kind of kinky hair, but most hair, on people of, of, who have tight curls, it's not kinked, it's curled. So this is a thing, where right? People talk about, oh, so-and-so has kinky hair. No, no, so-and-so probably has curled hair. So that's the first thing. But secondly, do you know the, value, the evolutionary value of having tight curls and kinks? Do either of you know? My guess would be that like, um you know, back in Africa because the sun is always beating down and there's not a lot of rain in a bunch of regions. Yeah. Like, it could be better protection for the top of your head, but also just, like, I know my hair personally soaks up water like a sponge. Yeah. So that helps with, like, hydration, maybe. Dude. Were you going to say the same thing? No. Oh, well, in that case, okay. Yeah, look, you, you want, if you go, remember, remember the map that I put up yesterday. You know, human beings, homo sapiens, homo erectus, we start in Africa. And people don't have baseball caps. You know, you don't, you, no one's wearing a Yankees cap there, my friend. And so you're in the sun and the sun's intense. And it's not to protect, it's to, it's to protect your brain. It's not about sunburn. It's about the brain. You really got to keep the brain cool. When your brain overheats, it's very much a problem. And so you got to find ways to keep the brain heated. So when you, once, once your hair grows out, when it's tightly cured, look at 4C. When your hair starts growing like 4C, it is going to go like this, out, 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 out. And that means the sun's going to hit the edge of your hair. Like in your case, it would hit, you know, like the top of what would be your hat here and not going to hit your scalp. Whereas me, the sun's going to hit me and my brain's going to really heat up. And so from an evolutionary perspective, afros... Right, just what we call people when you you know you, you let 4C hair grow out. Say for example, it starts to grow, and it, and then your hair is your head is being protected. So it's very much a positive thing from an evolutionary perspective, right? Can you go to the next slide now? So in 2017, the U.S. military said, "Hey, y'all can wear your hair natural," which is crazy to me. Like we're telling the two of you, if you join the army, you join the military, like you can't. You have to straighten your hair. And so when, Blake, when I said, like, hey, is there any problems to that? Well, here's a problem. That we're telling black, we're telling women who don't have, if you go back, to like one, one or two hair, we're telling this whole population of people that, like, no, you have to be white. You have to, you have to live your life as though you're white. This is a thing for lawyers, by the way. The lawyers stop this one up on the lure. So that would be telling the two of you, like, no, 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 you have to straighten. So go to the next slide. And then half of all U.S. states now are, have either passed or are passing laws saying that you cannot, in the workplace, you cannot discriminate against women on the basis of wearing their hair natural. Like, come on, man, you come out of the womb as a black woman, and basically you come out of the womb and immediately you are branded saying, like, oh, well, if your hair starts to curl or kink, y'all are gonna have to straighten that out if you wanna join the workforce and be treated equally as everybody else. That's deep racism. So when you say, 
people who say, oh, racism's been over a long time in the United States or whatever it is. You don't, dude, 2017, that's, that, that's pretty, that to me, it seems pretty racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be like saying, you have to wear skin whitener. I don't know what the difference is. Trinity, you want to join the army? Man, you got to wear, you got to put on a lot of skin whitener, my friend. You're going to have to whiten up. <laughs> and 80% of black women, in one survey that I saw very recently, 80% of black women feel as though they will be discriminated against if they wear their hair natural. And there's plenty of research that we have that, yeah, wearing your hair natural, you're more likely to experience some kind of more likely, not extreme, you're not definitely going to, but the two of you, like going with a wig or wearing your hair as you're wearing your hair, this, this, this is gonna, Danielle wearing her hair like this, whether she wants to or not, is gonna benefit her in the workplace because, because not in every moment, but often. And that's the racism piece. Like that's, I don't, does that feel like racism? Do you wear your hair natural in part to avoid discrimination? Is that something you think about? No, because it's just way easier for me to wear my hair like this. But I've had conversations about this with my parents. Uh, I've seen it within my school system in general that girls who wear their hair natural, or even if they just get something like box braids, they'll run into some problems where like, they'll get dress coded for their hair when yeah. it really shouldn't be a problem. Dude, how do you get dressed coded for wearing your hair natural? You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? This is, listen, when people talk about white supremacy, if I could drop that word out there, can I drop the word? And we're good? Are we good on that? White people. Any, like, you, if people, when people use a word like white supremacy or white privilege, like we, we're in class four, and I've not said anything about white people or white privilege or white supremacy, anything like that. But this feels to me like it would be an example of white privilege. Get dress coded because you wear your hair natural, right? And so sometimes, for those of you, especially those of you who are those of you who are not black, just for a second, if you'll go with me, when you hear someone referencing this, and especially when you hear black people talking about some of these things, and maybe they're talking about some Chinese person dropping the N-bomb when they really weren't, and that sounds really stupid, but sometimes we're talking about things that are real, man. Do you, ever, do you wear your hair like that in part to? Um, for me, I'm someone who tends to wear my hair in protective style, so I'm usually in braids most of the time. Um, but when I do wear my hair natural, I don't really wear it out like all at one time. I usually try to do like a style where like the front is slicked back or like I have all my hair in a ponytail. I don't know. It just sometimes it seems like, well, not really anymore, but before when I used to, I used to have like a really big afro when I was in elementary school. Oh, dude, I used can to I wear see like it? a can, really Send me big, a photo of that. I have okay. a photo from my second grade. Yeah, I used to wear a really big afro and it tends to make people stare at you. Like, it's a little, and it's sometimes uncomfortable. But now that we're kind of in a time where, like, wearing your natural hair isn't as, like, wow, oh, my gosh, she has natural hair. I tend to now wear my curls out a little more. But it's still a little uncomfortable for me. Just because also it has a lot of work put into it. You have yeah, to do yeah, a yeah. lot of work to just wear your hair natural every day. And I personally don't have the time for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, uh, my, my brother had probably like three B hair. And my white brother, I, was, I should pull up and bring a photo in, and he carried his pick with him, and every day he was constantly picking his hair. But he wore it in a big afro, so you know. How do you feel about white people who use black hairstyles? All right. White people rocking black hairstyles. You're both laughing. Um, I would tend to say it's not that big of a deal, but it becomes uh, it becomes a little big, a bit of a big a deal when it becomes like you're not like, I don't mind you wearing braids in your hair. If that's what you want to do today, go ahead. But also it has been shown that white women wearing braids, it's damaging to their hair. It becomes like 
there a lot of white people have to cut off their hair after wearing braids just because it's just not fit for their texture. But I don't mind white people wearing You mean braids. like extensions? Yeah, like wearing weaves and stuff like that. that yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot of weight on their hair just yeah, because yeah, of yeah. the texture of their hair. But I don't mind you wearing braids or wearing a weave. That's what you want to do today? Go ahead. Do but, you um, do you. Yeah, it's just... I want to say it's a black... I mean, I guess it is a black hairstyle. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, because it's all... Globally, these styles are just borrowed and used and whatever. Danielle, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I really only have a problem with it in, like, two scenarios. One is when, like, a white person takes on a black hairstyle and then uses it as an excuse to start, like, acting black and, like, try to like use the fact that they have like a black st hairstyle and st are acting different from their old personality in a way Got that's you. more like stereotypical of black people. I find that really irritating because we're more than just our hairstyle or like how we're perceived in the media. And my other, um, I guess, beef with white people who use black hairstyles is really when like someone will take a black hairstyle but still be racist against black people. Like, mm -hmm. you'll adopt a part of our culture, but still hate us at our core. Really, if, like, you're just some white person getting, like, box braids or getting dreads, it really doesn't matter to me. But when you, like, use the fact that you got dreads as an excuse to be rude against black people or to try what? to adopt, like, stereotypical... Black uh, characteristics. You mean like, and then like walking around dropping the end bomb or something. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. It's also, it also becomes a problem when someone, it was a recent thing where like a white woman will get a braided hairstyle that we've been doing for years and it's not acceptable, like you said, in the workplace for me to have straight mm -hmm. backs or just wear my afro out or just, mm -hmm. but when white women do it, it's, it's okay. It's Somehow like, okay. oh, it's a, she's doing a new hairstyle. She's so fancy. She didn't, she didn't made herself all dolled up today. But it's like we do that every day, and it's a problem. But it's it's yeah, it's something to to think about. It does not go unnoticed. Yeah.